Hey guys, and welcome to Cooking with Remy. Let's get cooking. Today, we have a very, very, very special episode, even more special than a normal episode because we have a very special guest. Introducing Alicia Marie. Hi! Yay! Not only is this the president of the Cooking with Remy fan club, she has begged to taste test on an episode, and I said, sorry for the delay, I'll do you one better, and we're gonna make a whole episode about you. No, I didn't know that until you were like, what foods do you want? I was like, why am I picking? She was like, this is about you. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I hope I do justice. You will. Can't not, it's nachos. Everyone subscribe, and let us know if you want Cooking with Remy merch. Absolutely. So as she just said, today we are doing Alicia Marie's favorites. I asked her to send me a list of her favorite foods, and her being very indecisive, had some trouble, but we narrowed it down, and here's what's on the menu. First dish of the day are the Marie nachos. Mm -hmm. I have such a love for nachos. Growing up, we didn't really have much ingredients. Like, my mom's not like a cook. So Ash and I would always put Fritos and just melted cheese Ooh. in the microwave, and like, that makes me happy, so I can't even imagine what you got. Today's are a little elevated. We're doing like some steak. You chose steak uh -huh. on them. We're doing like a cheese sauce. You can do just melted cheese, but we're doing a cheese sauce, little guac, little topping, a little jalapeno, a little hot and sweet. It's gonna be amazing. The Marie Supreme. The Marie Supreme. <laughs> the next dish of the day is penne a la vodka, which I will say, I'm an angel hair pasta girly. Girly. Mm -hmm. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. But that is a, a classic dish that I make when lots of people are coming over and one of Alicia's favorites that I make. So I figured I'd throw it in here. Growing up, my family called me the spaghetti kid because Aww. I loved spaghetti so much. <laughs> Like that was my go-to favorite meal ever. A little twist on some spaghetti for the spaghetti kid. <laughs> the gourmet penne a la vodka. Penne. You say penne weird. Penne. 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 The last Marie special of the day is going to be one of my all-time favorites that I've been begging Remy to make me for years and years and years and years. The homemade crispy rice. Mmm, the spicy tuna crispy rice. Spicy tuna crispy rice. Gorgeous. I do have this recipe already on the website and it's lived there for a while, but I feel like people didn't know. So we're bringing her out, making her today. And if you want the recipe, if you want all the recipes, they're on cookingwithremy.com. So all that's left to do is one thing. Let's get cooking. Woo! All right, we are going to begin by making our nachos. So I'm gonna be working on the cheese on this side and Alicia's gonna start with the guac. So she decided on all the toppings, we're giving it the whole nine yards. So we're doing guac, we're gonna do a little pico, we're gonna do beans, corn, all the things. You can choose whatever you wanna put on though, but I personally like guac, she likes guac, so that's what we're gonna do. So you're gonna start by chopping up all the little veggies okay. and I'm gonna make the cheese sauce on this side. Gorgeous, just small little cubes. With guac, I kinda just throw anything in that I have, but today we're gonna make it a little more traditional. We've got lime, avocado, red onion, cilantro. We've got tomatoes, you can do jalapeno, you can add whatever you want in. But on this side, I've got my burner going and I'm gonna start making the roux, which is gonna make our cheese sauce thick. Now you can just add shredded cheese on some chips if you wanna do that in the microwave. This is a little bit elevated because these are the Marie Supreme. <laughs> we can't just throw the word Supreme out there. With some no. melted microwave yeah. cheese. I mean. Exactly. So we're making like, you know when you go to like the baseball game and you get like that luscious cheese? That's what we're making. And if you guys have ever made macaroni and cheese before, it's similar. We start every cheese sauce, bechamel sauce, with a roux, which is a couple tablespoons of butter. What does the roux do? It makes it nice and thick. Oh. Mm-hmm. We love it thick. So we're gonna take some butter. Great chop, that's looking so good. All right, so she's chopping, my butter's melted, and now we're gonna add in two tablespoons of flour. So sprinkle, sprinkle, little bits at a time, and we're gonna whisk that in. And when you're using a non-stick pan, you wanna use a non-metal whisk, just a little reminder. All right, so you can see this is already getting nice and thick until it becomes like a thick paste like this. And you don't wanna have the heat too high because you don't wanna burn it. And once it becomes a nice little paste, we're gonna take a cup and a quarter of whole milk. You can use regular milk, but we're making it extra luscious. And we're gonna slowly add it in as we whisk, whisk, whisk. Where are your favorite nachos from? Oh, <laughs> honestly, a baseball game. Like I kinda okay. like them simple. Yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah. the Supreme. I like it with just the, the nacho cheese and the jalapenos. Okay. Yes. If you ever need a sous chef, I'm just saying. You know what this looks like? What? Cream of wheat. <gasps> Fucking love cream of <laughs> No, like that's when I actually knew we were best friends. Because we both like cream of when, wheat when and I, no one does. No one even knows what it is. Us and fellow geriatric people. Now our roux and milk mixture has come together. I'm gonna turn the heat down. 
to low. I should pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> oh That's okay. And then I'm gonna take a block of, this is mild cheddar cheese. You can use sharp cheddar, you can use whatever cheese you'd like, but we're making regular nacho cheese. So I'm gonna use this. And I'm just gonna slice it up into little pieces so that it'll melt easily into my mixture. Also, I'm just saying, I will sometimes make queso in the microwave as well because it works just as well. So really use what you've got. If you're living in a college dorm and you wanna make some Marie Supreme, use your microwave. Or if you watch my old life hacks, you know, use like a, a clothing iron. <laughs> <laughs> now I will say I gave Alicia the wrong instructions and we probably should have mashed the avocado first and then added in the things, but that's okay. We can make it really chunky. Or chunky, yeah. I like, I chunky. like a chunky guac. I actually do too. Oh, wow, this looks baseball adjacent, I will say. We're gonna do a little taste test of the cheese sauce now. Oh I'm a little, yeah, get, get your little spoon in I there. I came for the taste test. Truly, <laughs> and I didn't that I put you to work. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> Oh. Mm. Oh, mm. Remy. And very cheesy. I'm gonna put a little more milk to make it a little bit thinner. Just a little more milk. Damn. That is so good. So, this is the way my brain works. I'm like, ooh, what do we need for this to be like bomb? We're gonna take some jalapeno juice, right? Just mm -hmm, a little. Mm -hmm. I don't ice shit, okay? We just, boop. Oh, okay. And that looks we'll delicious. We'll do more, whatever. You can make it as spicy as you want or as not spicy as you want. I, I like love that. some spice. Oh my God. Mm. I could go with more, but I wanna make sure you like it too. Yeah, put more in. Okay. <laughs> I also added a little bit more salt, a little more pepper, a little more garlic powder, onion powder. We're making this flavorful. There we go. That looks so good. That's the beauty of cooking, guys. Taste as you go. Add some flavor profiles. Like, I like my nachos a little bit more plain. Alicia likes a little more spice, but it's her episode, so we're gonna add some spice. I'm gonna stick it on the burner back there to keep it warm, and we're gonna chop up some things. Okay, so for my cooking, I've got the nacho cheese on the back burner on the lowest heat possible. I'm stirring it every few minutes or so so it doesn't harden, stays nice and soft, as you can see. For the steak, I took a ribeye and I chopped it up into tiny little nacho-sized pieces, coated it with a little olive oil, and then for seasoning, I did salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, a little paprika, a little chili powder. You can throw on taco seasoning if you want. You can put whatever you'd like. Getting these nice and crispy with a little charred edge, and then I'm just gonna prep the rest of the ingredients. Alicia Marie is gonna taste test the steak. The eye rolls are always the best. All right guys, all of our ingredients are ready and now it's time to assemble. I did say we could make fresh chips and Alicia said no. She wants these. Because I would have these. If you wanna fry up your own chips, you absolutely can. I mean, I do love a pre-made tortilla chip as well. So we've got a giant bowl because when you've got nachos, you need a giant bowl to catch all of the other ingredients. And I don't know about you, but I like to layer. layer. Thank There's God. Only one way. Beautiful. You have to layer. Agreed, so. you need things in every bite. So let's do like a thin layer of the chips on the bottom. Bottom. Now, cheese. More chips, let's go. And a little more cheese, or a lot of more cheese. And I feel like now we can add like the beans. Okay, You know, and Love. a little corn. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that looks Question good. Question of the day, when you order Chipotle, do you ask for the corn? And if you don't, <clears throat> I do double corn. It's the best. I love the corn. More chips? More chips. Let's do one more layer. Yes, we got all the fragmented bits. That's the best part. Ooh. -hoo. Last cheese, next. The steak, we got some pico. Now I love cilantro. Yes. So do you want me to put some to this? Like I'll eat it. Okay. Don't you worry about it. Yeah, cilantro like, all over. You gotta get it, especially for the photos. Like it looks so nice. It just tastes no, like it so. Maybe like a little guac, a little sour cream right on the top, you know, like they so do. I don't like sour cream, but I'll let you put it on top. And I don't like cilantro, exactly. but I let her put it on yeah. top. I love it, I love it. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do a big mound of guac on top. Alicia did some fresh lime juice. Yes, and then we're gonna do sour cream. You're really going for the lime. Oh yeah. You like this the little, the little thing. You have to let the chips absorb it. Nice little sour cream mound. We're cleaning up the bowl. We're making it aesthetically pleasing. It looks gorgeous. And now for the last little topping, we need jalapenos. If you haven't tried the hot and sweet jalapenos at Trader Joe's, they're amazing. They're like a sweet, spicy, perfect combination. If you like a bread and butter pickle, it's very similar. All right guys, it is the best time of the day. It's taste test time. This is what Alicia's been waiting for for two years now. I'm so excited. Here we go. All right, tell us how to get the perfect bite. Well, you need a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Find a chip that has like the perfect amount of cheese. I want a hot and sweet on mine too. Okay, mm -hmm. there we go. Cheers. Cheers. One, two, three. Oh my 
I love nachos. That might be some of the better nachos I've ever had. Wow. The steak adds like such a nice flavor element. The jalapeno, the cheese is like, it's starting to harden a bit, but, but it's still. But that's why we layered. All right. Well, we're going to snack on these and we're going to share with everyone because this is enough for a small army. <laughs> and we'll get to the next recipe. Woo! It's pasta time. Right, guys we're back for recipe number two we are making penne alla vodka but obviously alicia said earlier she doesn't like penne so we're making angel hair alla vodka basically it's like a tomato cream sauce with some vodka in it we can add a little kick if you want it's amazing and it's really easy to make it makes a great party dish if you have a lot of people coming over it's honestly very cost effective too it's not super expensive to make and it always pleases the masses masses are right here. We're gonna begin by cooking our pasta. We have our angel hair, which this cooks very quickly, in like four to five minutes or so. I've got a big pot of water behind and we're gonna throw the whole box in. Okay, so you're gonna take your angel hair pasta. Look at her, she's a chef. Do you like it broken or do you like it all? No, never break it. There we go, come on. We're gonna set our timer and you wanna push it around so that they don't get stuck together, they don't get stuck to the bottom of the pan. Just Jeez. let this cook for like four minutes or so. We're gonna cook it a little al dente because it's gonna finish cooking in the sauce. What does that mean? Al dente is just like almost done, but not Ooh, fully cooked. Like it's gonna continue cooking in the sauce though, so we don't want it to get too mushy. Now in our pan, we have this going over like medium heat or so. We're gonna take a couple tablespoons of butter and put it into the pan. Put that right in there. Good job. Yeah, let her melt around. Melt her down. Oh, my stomach's gonna hurt after Ooh, this. Same. Now the most important part of this dish, about a minute before your pasta's done, you're gonna take some of the pasta water out in the cooking world, this is called liquid gold, and it is going to basically make our sauce. Drain the pasta. And the way to tell if it's ready, <gasps> that means it's ready. All right, guys, our butter has melted. Now we're gonna go in with two finely chopped shallots. Would you like to put those in there? Yeah, you put onion in there. Yes, girl, and we finely, finely chop them and add some nice sweetness. And then also I'm gonna take three finely chopped garlic cloves. Okay. Oh. Oh my God, the smell of just butter and onion. It already smells so good. So this is the base of our sauce. It's gonna add some nice caramelized flavor, some nice depth, and we're just gonna cook these until they sweat down, and we'll move on to the next step. These look great. You want them to have just the slightest bit of color. They're, right now they're translucent, maybe a minute or two more. They're gonna be perfectly starting to turn golden brown, and then we go in with our can of tomato paste. Truly one of my favorite meals ever is angel hair pasta. Mm -hmm. Red sauce. I know you're more of a cream, it's okay. Mm -hmm. A shit ton of Parmesan. Mm. Garlic breadstick Ooh. and an Olive Garden salad. <gasps> I'm just saying, like, if it was my birthday, this is a meal I would want. Guess who liked Remy's Instagram photo? Shut the f up. Gordon Ramsay. <gasps> Shut the f up, Remy! So our onions and garlic, it smells so good here. It's almost ready. I'm gonna take a six ounce can of tomato paste. I always buy the Costco ones in bulk because I make this so frequently, but get whatever you want and we're gonna spoon it in. Funny, because you like never invite me over when you make it. I literally make it for you all the time. We're actually gonna fry this up in the garlic and onion Ooh, oil. Why would you do a paste over just sauce? I like that it's so concentrated. It has nice flavor, and then it doesn't make it too watery because you want the sauce to be it nice and thick watery. and luscious. Yeah. I will say I really like the truff sauce. Oh, I love the truff sauce. And that one doesn't really need doctoring up, but if I have like a sauce in my cabinet, I'll like add a shit ton of garlic to it. Mm. I'll add chili flakes to it. Get it a little spicy. Do you want this to be spicy? What's your vibe? We can add pepper flakes, but you can easily just not and not I'll make add it spicy. On top. It's fine. Okay. So we're gonna fry this up in the butter shallot yeah. garlic mixture. It's gonna get really nice and like a dark brown color. You're gonna cook it for maybe like two to three minutes, and then we're adding in the vodka. Ooh! Ooh. Wow, see I wouldn't have done this. I would have thrown everything in at once. Mm -hmm. I would have put in the onion and the sauce mm -hmm. and the garlic. And then I'd be like, why are the onions not crispy? <laughs> you can do that, but this like adds the levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depth and levels of flavor. So you get like the sweet caramelized onions. You get like that fried, like nice deep tomato flavor. We're gonna add the alcohol in. You got the cheese. You got all the flavors together. This looks great. Good job. Everything's been cooked up. It smells absolutely amazing. Oh. And now we're going in with the vodka and that's gonna make this vodka sauce. Now, I know the idea of vodka in- <laughs> Sorry, that was so cute. It's true. I know the idea of 
alcohol and sauce sounds a little crazy, but when you cook alcohol at a high temperature, it actually burns off. And actually, the reason why we put it in is it makes it, I know I keep saying it, but it makes the sauce really nice and luscious. It gives you that mouthfeel. It's gonna add depth versus if you didn't put it in. On the heat, I'm gonna add in our vodka. Woo I added in a quarter cup. You can add in more or less. I found this is like the perfect amount though. And you just wanna mix it all in wow. and let this cook off. Everything looks amazing. I now have about a half to three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Pour this in and keep mixing. Ooh. Yeah, slowly incorporate. That looks good. I did add less because she likes less creamy. Now, while she's stirring, I'm gonna season, again, with just my normal seasonings that I always have. We're gonna add in fresh herbs, but if you don't have fresh herbs, you can add in dried herbs, you can do Italian seasoning, basil, parsley, all those would be great in here, but we're gonna add the fresh later, so I'm not gonna put them in now. We've got pepper, we got salt. If you think it looks wrong, it's not. This is just Alicia's version. Alicia's we're doing version. garlic and onion. This is where that liquid gold comes in, BRB. So we've got the pasta water. So this is obviously hot water, but then it has that starchiness from the mm. pasta. And this, when we add in little bit by bit, usually I just eyeball it, honestly, until the pasta sauce looks good. The starchiness in this helps to make the sauce thinner, but not too thin. It's not gonna break. It keeps it nice and thick and coats the pasta well. We're just gonna add in a little bit by bit, quarter of a cup or so. Depends on your sauce and how much you want and what thickness you'd like. And then I'm also gonna go in with our Parmesan cheese. Of course, you gotta have cheese here. This container is 10 ounces. I usually use about six to eight ounces or so and always save some for the topping, of course. I've already learned so much and it's been two, two recipes. Really? What's your big tip? I didn't know you did so the pasta the water. Pasta water. Mm -hmm. Do you see how it made such a difference though? Oh yeah. Sprinkle in the cheese here. I'm gonna do about <laughs> half of this container. I'm more of a like green cheese. Green cheese? Growing up, we always called the- <gasps> I oh love the Kraft green Kraft cheese. Green. We always call it green oh, cheese. Oh, I still do. I put that on my butter nudes, That's but for this, fave. you need a little better quality. Yes. That's my fave. Okay, I did about five ounces of cheese to start with, and then I'm gonna start adding in a little more pasta water. You're just gonna mix until it's the perfect thickness for you, and the cheese melts down. Just let this go on low, and once the cheese fully melts, we can add the pasta in. Tell me when. Well, we're gonna let this sit for a little bit. Oh. And we're gonna go to the garden and get some fresh herbs. So. Like, I'm so impatient. <laughs> you just don't want the pasta to overcook, so we're gonna do that right at the end when we're ready to eat so it's nice and fresh. But in the meantime, let's go to the garden. We're in the garden, <laughs> and Alicia's gonna pick some fresh basil and fresh Italian parsley to garnish. I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna have to point out which one. Here is basil. Okay. Ooh. You wanna just cut a little bit? That will be for a garnish as well. Wow. I feel like different. I have a green thumb. Maybe a little Me more. Too. More parsley? I feel like I have a green thumb. Thank you. That looks perfect. Really Gorgeous. Cool All right, we're back from the garden. I chopped up the fresh basil. We're gonna add this in, and then we can add in the pasta, if my sous chef wants to get the pasta, <gasps> and throw it in there. Wait, that looks so right good. Right in there. And we're just gonna break oh the pasta. I'm gonna be honest, I've never worked with Angel hair like this before. So. They really stick together, don't they? Also, mine still is up there. I'm just letting everyone know I did get penne for this recipe, and when I told her we were making it, she got mad at me and said she wants <laughs> angel hair. So. I was like, not a penne, girl. Our pasta is ready. I'm gonna show Alicia how do we plate it up. And we've got a pair of tongs, and what you're gonna do is grab a nice chunk of your pasta, and this is just a fun little tip for you, Alicia, when you make your angel hair. So the twist moment? Yeah. <gasps> I never do it, but. Plate Place it down, twist, twist, twist. Wow. There we go. That looks like a little restaurant. You said you wanted your cheese on top. A lot. Oh my God, it looks so good. And some pepper flakes on top. Too. Sorry, I should have put that on last. That's time. okay. No, it's fine. Just keep fucking it up. <laughs> All right, guys, it's done. Time to taste test. One, two, three. You can't tell me there's a better pasta noodle. It's kind of ramen adjacent. The sauce is fantastic. <laughs> I think I prefer a different noodle, but I'm glad that you got what you want. Mm. If you want to get the spice actually in the sauce versus the top, you just add a couple teaspoons of red pepper flakes into the butter shallot garlic mixture when you're cooking that. Let that really infuse into the oil, but all right, let's make our last meal. Woo! Hello guys, I'm here to bring you the third and final recipe. I'm having Alicia Marie sit over there for a little bit because I'm going to man the first part, she's gonna man the second part of this recipe. It is absolutely fantastic. If you go to any Japanese restaurant, I feel like they have this like American little twist on their appetizer menu and it's become such a phenomenon. So this is homemade spicy tuna crispy rice. If you make it at home, it is way cheaper than going to the restaurants and it's really easy to make. So first up, I already did the prep by making two cups of sushi rice and one that was nice and hot, added in some rice vinegar, some 
some salt, some sugar. Mix that all up and then I put it into a little dish and then put that in the fridge for at least two hours. We want that to get nice and cold and hardened so that when we put it into the fryer, it stays together nice and compact and can get crispy for the crispy rice, obviously. And now we're gonna move on to our topping mixture. Now, if you're vegan, you can simply just do avocado with like a little bit of truffle oil. I've had that at restaurants, it's delicious. If you wanna do salmon, that's actually my personal favorite, but Alicia wanted tuna. I feel like this is the most classic one, but we got some tuna sashimi. You wanna make sure to get sashimi grade fish, obviously for eating it raw. So I've got some fresh tuna here. And then to make it that delicious, creamy, spicy mixture, we're gonna add in some Japanese mayo. We've got some sriracha, a little soy sauce, a little sesame oil, and a little salt. Super easy, comes together quickly, and let's chop it up. Also a little note, so this tuna came completely frozen, and I let it thaw about halfway or so. It's much easier to chop it up into tiny little pieces when it is like a little bit thawed, but not fully thawed. But if it's fully thawed, no worries. I've done that before too. You can really make it work. And I like to chop mine into tiny little pieces and make it almost like a mashed mixture. But if you wanna leave it as like a whole slice of tuna, you can do that. You can make the pieces as big as you'd like, but I love just making it like a mushy mixture. Sorry, that sounds gross, but it's really good. Before we get started on the tuna, I'm gonna get working on our rice so Alicia can start frying that. I have here the rice nice and cold. Now this is the fun part. You can decide how you want to cut your crispy rice for the spicy tuna. You can do little long logs, you can do little circles. I think I'm feeling a square, but do whatever works for you. And to keep your knife from sticking to the rice, you wanna keep it nice and wet with some water. So I'm gonna wet this. All right, we're gonna test to make sure our oil's hot by putting a little bit in and it's perfect. Then we're just going to gently place our rice in there. And you don't wanna overcrowd it, just a few at a time. They're gonna cook for a few minutes on each side. Flip them over when they're getting nice and golden brown. Perfect. Put it on a paper towel. You can go into these little squares. There you go. Right there, good job. Get your shield, get your shield. She's spurting. If you do it right though, it should sound like this. Let's make our spicy tuna. So now we've got our Japanese QP mayo. You can use regular American mayo if you don't have this, but it just has like a nice extra little citrusy flavor that's so good. Ooh, I'm gonna add two to three tablespoons of this. Sriracha, I don't have the green cap one with me right now, so I am going to just use this one. A little sesame oil, just to add some nice nuttiness. A little soy sauce. Add some nice saltiness. How's it coming over here, Rem? Pretty good. A little salt also just to add a little extra flavor, but not too much because that soy sauce is salty. You wanna mix that up? Really in there, mix it well, yeah. Yeah, 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 get up in there. Mm. Now we're gonna take a little dollop of our tuna mixture, plop it right on top. It'd be like 50 bucks at a restaurant. Truly. Now to add a little extra sweetness, we're gonna take some eel sauce and just put a little now we're gonna take a little slice of avocado. Obviously each one needs a little avocado. You can mm -hmm. put some on. Green onions just as a little garnish on top. And last but not least, some black sesame seeds. This really does tie the whole dish together. Yep, yeah, it's getting Michelin star. Our spicy tuna crispy rice is done. This truly looks restaurant quality, yeah. I must say. And we're gonna go in for a bite. And it's gonna be messy. I'm Ew. just letting everyone know. Cheers. Cheers. Oh! Last bite of the day. Oh my god. Oh. It tastes like a restaurant. No, Remy. Oh my god. Not that I didn't think you would slay. Serve and slay. This truly is one of the best crispy rice I've had. That means the world. No, I'm being it's dead so serious. Happy. It's really good, guys. Let me know if you guys want a part two of Alicia's favorites. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Be sure to check out Pretty Basic, our podcast. Check out Alicia on Instagram, Alicia Marie on TikTok, our YouTube channels. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Wow. <laughs>